Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's doing good out there today and thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch the video. Just actually down here at my mom and dad's house sitting in my dad's old chair here. Uh, been down here cutting some woods on some limbs that fell down here on my mom and dad's property trying to keep it all cleaned up. And I just uh, want to take some time to do today's video based upon a request that I got yesterday from a subscriber. That it was saying that uh, they he, they thought that I talked a lot about catching bass in clear water, but not enough about catching bass in muddy water. So that's going to be today's video. I'm going to give you guys some tips and advice on catching bass in muddy water uh, that I think will really help you out. Because honestly, um, you know, I I don't really have a preference as far as the type of water that I'm fishing. I've had great days in muddy water. I've had great days in clear water. If you're getting bit, it doesn't really matter if it's de if it's clear or dirty. Uh, it's just fun. The only advantage about fishing in clear water is you get to see the fish more, which uh, adds a visual appeal to it. But there is some some tricks and some advice that I can pass along with you guys uh, about fishing in muddy water. And the first of all, you have to define what muddy is and Muddy is a relative term to what the, the normal water clarity is in a lake. Because if you're fishing a lake like, say for example, Bull Shoals in Arkansas on the lower end, you may have 10 to 15 foot of clarity. So muddy water in that scenario may be two foot visibility. Whereas if you're fishing, you know, some lake, say the one of the Mississippi River Oxbows, uh, you know, three to four inches visibility could be considered muddy water because it's normally, you know, dirty there all the time. But for the for the sake of the video, what I wanted to, to concentrate on is I'm going to consider muddy water any time that you've got water visibility under six inches. That's muddy water. And you may not think about that, but six inches of visibility is plenty for a fish and it's and i've had some great days in fishing in six inches of visibility i've had some good days fishing in in two inches of visibility but um for the sake of what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about say two to six inches of visibility if you have less than two inches of vis visibility like where you drop your bait into the water and it disappears it's extremely difficult to catch any fish in that type of water but if you have two inches of visibility that's enough so anyway, the first thing that you've got to consider when you're uh, approaching muddy water is what the water temperature is. Water temperature in relationship to the visibility of the water is the most important thing. It's what you have to build your foundation upon when you're trying to determine how to go about fishing. And everybody that has fished much understands the fact that bass are difficult to catch in cold muddy water. That is some of the worst conditions for that. So. If you're fishing in water visibility that is like uh, under 50 degrees, if it's in the 40s and the water visibility is two to six inches, uh, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get bit in there. You might get some bites, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna be pretty difficult to do that. If you're in a situation like that, let's say the water temperature is cool. It's, it's the water temperature is between 45 and say low 50s, which would be on the cold range for fishing in muddy water. The thing that you have to do in a situation like that is you have to fish baits that dis displace a lot of water and baits that don't move very fast, that are fairly slow because a bass doesn't have any ability to visually detect a, a lure very well. They do a little bit, but not very much. So they have to rely on their lateral lines, the vibration to catch them. And in that cold water, they're not gonna want anything that's moving very fast. So. The two main techniques that I use in those situations there is some type of a big full profile jig, uh, you know, like an a light jig, something like a quarter ounce full profile pitching and flipping jig with some type of a big uh, large uh, trailer on it, like a Zoom super trunk, something like that. Something that, uh, you know, puts forth a lot of bulk and is fairly slow and also is fairly dark. You know, you want some type of a dark color in a situation like that to uh, silhouette the, mur the muddy water. The second situation that I would use, or the second bait that I would use in that situation would be um, a big spinner bait with a big single number eight willow leaf blade on it. Now, if, if I'm using this particular bait like on a three eighths or a half ounce head, and I've got, <clears throat> say like a number seven or number eight um, Colorado blade on there, 
I can fish that bait extremely slow. I can I can keep my rod tip high, put it on 25 pound test line, and I can just thump it through that shallow water. And sometimes that's a really good way to catch them you know, if the water is dirty and cold like that. So those, that's gonna be my two main considerations. The next thing that I consider on there, we'll talk a little bit about areas here in a little bit, but the next we'll move up to the next water temperature zone. Let's say you're between 65 and 70, 60, 65 and 75 degrees. And normally, you know, this is gonna be in the springtime of the year, uh, it's all the way between the post, the pre-spawn to the post-spawn. In this situation, um, you've got the same baits that continue to produce, the big jigs, that type of stuff. But as the water temperature warms up into that 60 degree mark, that's when you're gonna start, it's gonna start opening up some other baits, <clears throat> so like some creature baits whether it be like a big zoom brush hog, a tube, a big lizard, something like that. If, as the water warms, and even if it's muddy, a lot of times those bass will get off a jig and they'll get on some type of a creature bait. Spinner bait's still gonna be working under those situations, but the, as the water warms up into the 60s, it's also gonna open up uh, some type of a, of like a square bill crank bait, possibly a chatter bait, baits that still displace a lot of water, but begin to move a little bit faster. Those bass are gonna be getting a little bit more aggressive and they're gonna chase those faster baits that they weren't chasing when the water was cold. So square bill, square bill crankbait, uh, creature bait, still the jig, spinner bait, that type of stuff, you know, 65 or mid 55 to 65 degrees. Now, as, a, as it gets warmer than that, like the water temperature, when it starts to get above 75 degrees, all the way through summer until it drops back down below 75 degrees in the fall, that is when um, I really like to fish muddy water because the muddy water in the middle of the summer, a lot of times that's a, that's a big advantage. The fish are more aggressive. Um, you get those days that are fairly bright days out there and the fish have a little bit more of a, of a ability to detect the fish visually if you have a bright day and it's, the water's hot. But the main thing about it is the metabolism of the bass. The bass are eating more and they're feeding more at that time of year than they do any other time of year. In the summertime of the year, guys, bass eat more than they do any other time of the year. And this is when, you know, I'll stay with the square bill crankbaits. Maybe I'll speed them up a little bit. Maybe I'll downsize. I don't need quite as big of a bait. Spinner baits are still gonna be productive, but maybe I'm not gonna use those big giant blades that slow it down. Maybe I'm gonna to go to a smaller blade, like you know, number, like a number five willow leaf, something that still displaces water, but moves a little bit faster. And then all of my creature baits and my jigs are still gonna come into play. You know, again, the tubes, the creature baits, baits like the beavers, baits like the Z hogs, all that type of stuff. Bass are just gonna be a little bit more aggressive. And actually, I look for that. I mean, in the summertime of the year, the way I like to fish is I like to look for muddy water. So um, that's sort of the foundation that you can begin as far as water temperature versus bait selection. Now, the next consideration you have to make is the areas that you wanna fish. For the most part, when the water temperature is below 70 degrees, like it's when it's between 50 to 70 degrees, I'm concentrating on rock. Rock is gonna hold heat a little bit more. It's gonna put those bass shallow against the rocks. And that's why um, when the water's muddy and that type of stuff, like a riprap is one of your best areas you can catch fish on. The bass will get tight on those rocks, they'll get active. 45 degree angle rocky banks, bluffs that have you know sun on them, that type of stuff. But as that water temperature gets above 75 degrees, that's when I'm moving more towards wood or shallow grass. If I've got, if it's a lake like Lake Dardanelle that has some gator grass or water willows, that can be really good when the water's over 75 degrees. If it's a lake that like Grand Lake where you're up in the rivers there and the water's dirty, that's when I like to fish isolated wood laydowns. That can be pretty good. So that's just a, a general overview, guys, of fishing in muddy water. I think if you, if you take that information that I just gave you, sort of use it as your foundation a little bit, and build upon it, you know, you'll uh, catch a lot more fish. Also, one other thing I'll add up as far as colors go, when the water temperature is below 75 degrees, that's when I like using the, either the darker colored jigs and creature baits or the brighter colored, like a bright chartreuse spinner bait. But as the water gets warm in the summertime, like when that water temperature 
is over 80 degrees. I like to go to a white or shad pattern, even if the water's muddy, it seems like I get more bites there. So anyway, just a few tips today, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe if you haven't had a chance to. Also go on fishthemoment.com, check out all of our fall and winter lake map breakdowns Johnny and I is putting out, and we'll talk soon. See you.